<laughs> Mate, if it weren't for Becca, I wouldn't be sat here now. Simple as that, because like I said, I've been like I went off the rails and stuff like that, and she she rung me back. So I remember when I walked out, and I remember looking around, and everyone was just going, Wah! and I remember, I remember my legs going like like jelly. I was like, whoa! I, I wish my mum was here, obviously, because she's my mum. My mum's always been. I think growing up, I, I was always a bit of a mummy's lad, in it. When I took him out, yeah, it was a good feeling. Me, Becca, and Poppy went up to the grave. And yeah, it was, just, it was just a good feeling to get that picture. And uh, it's been a rocky road of ups, downs, ups, downs. Well, to be honest, it's been down, 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 up, and then down, 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 and then obviously it, now it's up, and, and then the only way is up now. I want to go back like before your British title win because I heard you say something in an interview about how like years and years and years ago you were you went off the rails yeah. it, it all went mad and yeah. you thought about like leaving boxing and that what, yeah. what was what happened just uh just going around with the wrong people and um obviously going out partying um and yeah uh, I stopped training just obviously to go out just going out partying on my mates and and um yeah, that was it. So what age did you start boxing? Started boxing when I was, well, as far back as I can remember, which is when I started um, walking, basically, because my dad used to fight, all my older brothers used to fight. So, yeah, I, just remember, I can always remember just going with them, following them, yeah. And then what happened? You you went, you came to Gallagher's gym, or, or what, what was well, that? Well, when I started boxing, I used to be at a gym in, in Oldham called Oldham Boys. That was my first amateur gym. I went to Borshaw, then went back to Oldham Boys, and then um, I went to Northside. That was in Clayton. That was a good gym. Uh, yeah, and then I, I, I actually turned pro with Joe Pennington as well. I had a few fights with him. But I just felt, because I've been there from, I was pro into Joe when I was like, I was 12, 13 year old, and I'd been there right up until I was 18 year old, and I just thought, like, I needed a bit of a change. And um, then I moved from there, yeah. And then that's when I came with. Mm -hmm. With Joe, Joe, Joe Gallagher, and then uh, obviously I was training with Joe. I had a, f a few fights with Joe as well. And then, uh, my brother Ronnie was pro at the same time, and uh, I, know, I, I don't know what. But I just wanted to be at the same gym as Ronnie, young and stupid. Did you look up to Ronnie? Of course I did, yeah. So how much? What's the age difference between you two? A year, and uh, I used to go, and, uh, like I, I used to be signed up to a lad like, called Gary Hyde, and uh, obviously I was fighting all over the place, and I, well, and I wanted stability. I wanted to be. Here in my own town, I wanted to build my own, like, you know, like all my own fans and people. And, and when I used to go and watch Ronnie fight at um, the Frank Warren shows, I, used to, I remember I used to be there, I used to think, oh, I'd love to be like, on these shows and doing this. And then obviously, like, I'm there now. And obviously, I wanted to be at the same gym as Ronnie. So that's why I moved and left Joe for no reason. Biggest mistake I ever made in boxing. Really? I, I, always, I always said that to my manager, Kevin, like, can you get me back with Joe? Because I, I messaged Joe myself a few times, and obviously, at the time, when I wanted to come back, he had all the Smith brothers mm -hmm. and obviously had a stack stable and um, the gym was hammered. So George said, listen, the gym's too busy. And uh, I kept poking him and kept thinking. And uh, obviously Kevin sorted out for me. And then, um, yeah, and I'm back here now. You're back here now and yeah. it's, 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 like, it's like a new Mark Heffron. Yeah. Um, but going back, what, what made you sort of go off the rails a little bit where you sort of seem to lose interest in boxing. Just young and stupid. Um, my older brother Ben, he, he was the same. He used to uh, go out partying and be stupid. So, and, I, and me and Ben, like growing up, I, I was quite, always quite similar to Ben. So I think I just followed Ben. Yeah, uh, that's it. Yeah. How how many of you in the in the family? There's there's ten of us to to, to my mum, and then um, there's another. F Another four to um, another a woman, another woman, and uh, and then there's another one. My other brother Thomas, he's to another woman as well. Okay. You can all have a scrap. Of course, can yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the heifer one's good. That's amazing because um, ten of you. Yeah. Ten of you to, yeah. to one woman. What a woman. Oh, yeah, but she was a strong woman, my mum. Um, Goodness me. So I can always remember like when I was younger, like and I used to go to Olden Town with her and um, shopping and. 
and these people were pushing trolleys at about and you know, with all the shopping bags and my, and my mum, um, she always they must fit at least ten shopping bags and she she'd have them all wrapped round her hands and she'd just stomping through town with these bags and then uh, for years and years I used to think, wow, it's, like, it's strong, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and then, Obviously, as she got older, she got one of them trolleys, mm -hmm. and then um, she, she was going through at least four or five a month because the, the trolleys were crushing, the wheels were snapping. So she always had a new trolley. And I said, that's, that's what I think now. Like, wow, I can't believe like she used to carry all them yeah, bags in yeah. a trolley. Can't even put over it. It is mad when you when you look back at like some mm -hmm. of the things that your parents do, and you just think, wow, could yeah. I even do that now? Oh yeah, like, no, it's crazy. What What do you think you got from your mum? Because I, I always think like you get something from your mum, something from your dad, and it helps shape who you are. What do you think you got from each of them to make you who you from are? From my today? mum? Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know, it's, it's an hard one that. Uh, just try not to like, get, like care about, about things too much, you know what I mean? Like, mom, my mum used to be like, if something went wrong, she'd be like, so what, do you know what I mean, basically? So she didn't let herself get emotionally affected by That's stuff. it, yeah, yeah, and like, yeah, that was, that was it. And then obviously my dad, I think, with me, like, how hard I train and how hard I work, I've definitely got that from my dad. Because my dad, like, he, he, he was growing up, like, he, he was a grafter. Like, we used to go off for, on holidays and stuff, and my dad had to stay at home because he was working and graft, putting the graft in. So, yeah, definitely, that's one thing I have picked up from my dad, that, like, putting hard work in. And, like, Joe's always telling me, you need to calm down because you don't want to overdo it. And, I always feel like I'm not doing enough, do you know what I mean? So if Joe, when Joe does tell me that, then that, that, that gives me that, yeah, I'll take a step back, do you know what I mean? But like, if, if it was me myself, to say, oh, I need to have a rest, and I feel like I'm cheating you myself. You just keep going, keep yeah, going, keep I going. I keep going until I run myself into the ground. Did your dad ever like, train you or do pads and stuff like that? Of course he did, yeah. Um, my dad, my dad was a very good pad man. Um, he, he used to work as extra hard, but then he started getting bad shoulders. Obviously, from all the that's your all, fault. That is just battering him. <laughs> from, all, from all the all the years of inboxing himself, and then, like, like he's always been busy and working and grafting, and then obviously padding me, padding Ronnie. I always remember we used to do the um, the, the post box run. Uh, it's like it's like just, I think it was like just over two mile, three mile it was, and he used to sprint there, sprint back, and then my dad be waiting at home for his time and us, and then uh, I think my dad, my dad, my dad did it in like sixteen minutes. My dad's best time was might be just been under sixteen. I can remember I used to, I could never get, I could never get back in like 18, 18, 19 minutes. I always thought, bloody hell, like, he must have went like a steam train. And that, was, and that was my dad setting the timer and then running outside and then, yeah. and then getting back in and then stopping the timer himself. Do you know what I mean? Whereas we had my dad stop at starting the timer and stopping the timer. So that's where, yeah, that's, that's where I definitely get the working hard from my dad. Do you, um, well, did you or even now, do you feel like you need to impress him? Yeah, well, definitely, uh, um, yeah. Uh, but winning the British title and the Commonwealth and the IBF, I feel, I feel like obviously I've, I've like I've been an idiot over the years and I've had my ups and downs and like, I've caused my family a lot of stress over the years and I, I feel like they're getting on the straight and narrow over the, the last eight years. I feel like like I've, like I've shown to my family now that I'm not that idiot anymore. And, do you know what I mean? You said something about how um, you know there's ten of you to your mum and dad, yep. and um, at some point. Everyone's let him down at some point, yeah. but you winning that title was like, no, yeah. I'm here. I ain't letting you down. And that's it. Like, my, like that. When I said that, like, my, like in my dad' like life, like he's been very successful, my dad, and um, obviously like, my brothers and sisters and that we, we've never really, I don't know the word for that, um, like fulfilled. Do you know what I mean? And I just feel like when me winning these titles, like, I, I feel like I've, I, like I've fulfilled it there for him. What did he say to you? Well, my dad's not really, a, he's not really a massive talker, but obviously you never see my dad like smile on pictures. I've had many pictures with my dad and I had a picture with him and yeah, it's the first, first time I've proper seen him smile that. And uh, yeah, it made me happy. Must have made you very proud, yeah. like you made him proud. You said yeah. you've had more and um, more downs than you've had ups yeah. in your career. Yeah. Is this, like, how would you summarise what your career's been so far and, and where it's going? It's been, a, it's been a rocky road of ups, downs, ups, downs. <laughs> Well, to be honest, it's been down, 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 up, and then down, 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 and <laughs> obviously I've had this, now where I won this uh, British title, come off in the IBF, now, now it's up, and, and, and the only way is up now. The only way is up. Yeah. How, how do you reflect on that win over Lennox Clark? Let's talk about it. How did you feel? <sighs> uh, I can't even put it into words how I felt. It was just, 
they, they didn't feel real. Uh, I was absolutely buzzing uh, and at the time I, I couldn't wait to get out of the ring to get to my girlfriend Rebecca because she's seen me cry many a times, been depressed, um, stressed and you know, all the hard work of putting into boxing and like I said I've had, two, I've had so many downs and I just, I just wanted to get out of the ring just to get to Rebecca just to say we've done it. What did she say? She was buzzing, she was crying, yeah, she was buzzing. What about the fight itself? Did it go to plan? Definitely, like I said before to you, like, like we were on the pad with um, Ant and, and just got quick all the time and then when Joe brings the pads in, that's when we've got the opponent and, and that's when we work on game plan and uh, that's when it gets real um, and obviously the game plan that Joe put into place for me, literally, well, during the fight, everything what Joe said Leonard was going to do, he did and I, I remember being in the fight and I was thinking, wow, do you know what I mean? Like everything I've been working, it's just it's just going to play now, do you know what I mean? It's like the Matrix, every, yeah, all, yeah, you see yeah. all of his moves. Yeah, well, you put any opponent to Joe and give Joe 10 minutes and he'll he'll, he'll put a game plan into place for you, do you know what I mean? He's, he's, he's a very good trainer. How much of a difference has he actually made to you as a man? As a man, um, it's, it's made a massive difference to me. Um, uh, it's, it's just, I, I'm enjoying the boxing again now. and. I just feel like being there with John now, he's, he's got the experience and everything now, and then I guess that's what I've needed. I've always needed the, the experience, with it and John's got it. Is he sort of becoming, because he's, he's sort of, he's everything, isn't he? He's like your trainer. Yeah. He can be, he can promote you as well. He's got a big that's platform. It, yeah. he's, he's like, he's a manager as yeah. well. He's a bit of everything. Is yeah. he sort of like a, an extra dad as well? That's it. Well, the thing with Joe, like, as well, he, he, he always asks, you know, how are you? Are, are you okay? And, and he can look at me and know if I'm not happy, or if, I'm, if, I'm, if there's something wrong with me, or if I come in and I say, are you all right? And if I say, yeah, or the way I, he just the tone of my voice or how I speak, that I don't know how he knows, but he knows if I'm happy or not. And uh, he'll, um, he'll sit us down if, if, if there's anything up and uh, he'll talk to us, yeah. Well, he's known you since you were a young lad yeah. as well, though, hasn't he? Mm -hmm, yeah. Um, those early days, I seem to recall seeing a picture of you sparring Amir Khan. Yeah. Talk to me about that, because he, he's a lot smaller than you. Well, at the time, I was, um, I was about well away, light middleweight, uh, and obviously I went over to America with Gary Hyde. Um, in that short space of time with Gary Hyde, he did a, a lot for me, do you know what I mean? Um, he took me all over the place, but like I said before, I wanted to be here in Manchester building, do you know what I mean? And he was from Ireland. And um, yeah, he took me all over the place. I uh, went to America for, I did like eight, seven, eight weeks though with him, with Gary and then uh, he had me sparring with Amir Khan and uh, Jose Benavides Jr. Oh yeah. That was a great experience. And uh, yeah, sparring with, I sparred Khan a couple of times while I was out there and um, Freddie Roach pulled Gary, Gary out to the side and said, can we keep Mark here for the rest of Amir's camp? And uh, obviously I had to come back for the senior of the years. And uh, I come back and box Glen Foot. I was in the six, Semi-finals, like we had a right tear up. I remember <laughs> okay. when we was at the weigh, the, the weighing and stuff. Um, he, had, he had no top on. I was, I was like a, I was a young, I was like a young 18. Didn't have no, nothing like no, no hairs on my armpits or anything. I remember he had no top and he was like big bushy chest. I was like, what am I fighting him? <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Uh, but yeah. Did you win? No, I think he beat me by like a, by a, by like a bit of a split. I think it was a split decision. It was a good fight. I thought I did enough. It could have gone. I could sit in now and say I got robbed, but it was a close fight. Do you know what I mean? If I won, I'd have been happy. If he, he won, do you know what I mean? So, have you um, stayed in touch with Amir Khan? Or obviously, you are boxing in his. This is his own mm. uh, his own gym. Yeah, like I, I do chat to him on um, on hint, Instagram sometimes. Mm. Mm. What, what's he said about your your success? And to be honest, I've never really, it's never been like that, that, that kind of conversation. It's more like if I've tagged him in like a picture of me and him or something, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He asks how we are, how we're doing, and just stuff like that. After you won those belts, the three glorious belts yeah. that are, are set behind you, actually, do you know what? Pull one into shot. Let's get the British title in. Get the British in, yeah. Let's bring it in. Talk to me, Mark, about what this belt means to you. It means the absolute world to me, mate. Um, obviously, my whole career from the start up until now, this is the belt that I've I've always wanted to win. And um, I think every 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 British fighter in, in in British boxing wants to hold this title and win this title. It's got some good names on it. As yeah, um, it's got some very good names on it.
Is your name on it now? Ed? No, it's not on it yet, no. Okay. No. What, when do they put it on? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not mm. sure. Um, so this is the same belt, as long as the two others, that after you won, you sort of did a bit of a tour. I saw you took it to your dad. You yeah. had a photo, which we talked yeah. about. Um, I saw a picture of Poppy, your daughter, yeah. with, with all, of the, all of the belts on yeah. there as well. I think yeah. they're bigger than her. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> that must have been a good feeling, being yeah, able to take was, those belts back. It was a bit, very good feeling because... Uh, Obviously, I've let Poppy down before, saying I was going to bring the titles back. But this time, I was, I was, I very, I was raring to go. I, was, I had, I had like an amazing camp. I felt like, I, I couldn't like normally like have injuries. Like, and I didn't even want to jinx job. But I, I said it in an interview. Uh, I've, I've done like, a, like this was a few weeks before the fight. I, like I'd not had no in, uh, injuries or anything. Did the full camp, no injuries at all. Um, the camp went absolutely perfect. Uh, and uh, yeah, it was perfect count. Did you ever think about maybe not saying that to her? Because as you say, you let her down before. Yeah. I don't think you've let her down. You've just said to her, you're going to bring the belts and mm. then you didn't win the fight. But did you ever think about not doing that? No, um, I, like, I, do like, I do like to put a bit of pressure on myself sometimes. And uh, to be honest, Joe put a lot of pressure on me. He said, um, what I'm going to do, Mike, see the picture over there on the wall? Mm -hmm. He said, I'm having, a, I'm having a new picture made for the gym. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until after your fight with Lennox. And then it, obviously, and then when you win the titles, you'll be on the picture. So I was like, oh, now that's pressure. <laughs> so I mean, so obviously I give myself a little bit of pressure to my little girl. But then when Joe said that to me, then I was like, no, this is pressure. <laughs> well, look, it came good. Yeah. Um, and as part of that, you took the belts to yeah. your, your mother's resting yeah. place as yeah. well. What was that like? That was another one. Um, I, I wish my mum was here, obviously, because she, my mum, my mum's always been. I think growing up, I, I was always a bit of a mummy's lad, in it. Um, so obviously, she, she was always buzzing for me when I was doing good, and obviously, like for, for years, I'd let her down, let the family down, and um, obviously, winning the titles. That was another thing that I said in interviews. Obviously, I can't wait to get the belts and take them up to my mum's grave. And uh, when I took them up, yeah, it was a good feeling. Me, Becca, and Poppy went up to the grave. And yeah, it was, just, it was just a good feeling to get that picture. And uh, I even uh, pinpointed it on Twitter, so it stays at the top of my finger mm -hmm. now. Yeah, can you good. do it on Instagram, that? Yeah, yeah. Can you do that? Yeah, right, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it on now. You can pin a few up there. Right, um, right. What did you say when you placed those belts just, there? We did it, Mum. I just, um, yeah, that was it. I, was, I feel like just we did it, and uh, I'm buzzing. And uh, so I saw you watching down on me. You're in a good place, Mark. Yeah. yeah you, you've done well. You should be very yeah. proud. Um, Tell me about the role that Rebecca's played in your life. The, ro the role? <sighs> Mate, if it weren't for Rebecca, I wouldn't be sat here now. Simple as that, because, like I said, I've been, like, I went off the rails and stuff like that, and she, she rung me back, um, got me back on the straight. You've been together how long? 13 years. Yeah, so Rebecca's the massive part of, my, of me being here now. Um, I'm very thankful, and... Uh, uh, I, I do everything I can for Rebecca, and like, she, and she's happy. So she's the constant thing throughout all of this. She's been the constant thing for the last thirteen years. Hundred percent. Your ups, your downs, yeah. everything that you've gone through. She's yeah. always the first one there. Definitely, yeah. She's um, she's always been there for me, and she's she, like her shoulders always been there for me. Um, yeah, she she's done absolutely everything for me. Um, this is like why I try and give her a good life now and anything she wants, I'll, I will get her. And, um, and she knows that and, and she, she never feels, she, she never feels like, she always knows she, whenever she asks me for anything, I'll always say, I'll, I'll get her. When you say, if it wasn't for her, I would be sat here today. What exactly do you mean by that? I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't be doing, like, here in boxing, um, I, I, I reckon I'd be, I would be out doing something stupid, do you know what I mean? Because obviously I was going around the wrong people and uh, obviously Becca put me on the straight and narrow. And then Poppy came into your life. Yeah. How old is she? Poppy's five now. Poppy's five. Yeah. How did that change you? Did it change you? Of course it did, yeah. Like, well, that's it. Like, like, what was that? Five years ago then. Uh, obviously I've been, been on the straight and narrow for like two years before that, back, back boxing. That, but when Poppy was born, then that's when I had a priority. Do you know what I mean? That's when I like... I want to give Poppy a good life. I want Poppy to have everything she wants growing up. And obviously, and boxing's all I know. So obviously, and I don't want to be going out working. Um, so yeah, boxing's all I know. And I want to give Poppy the best life. 
We hear this all the time about how fighters have motivations. They're motivated by their kids, yeah. by their partners. When you're actually in the ring, when you're taking punches, when you're throwing punches, can you think about that? Does it ever actually creep into your mind? You've taken a hard shot, or poppy. Like, does does that ever happen? No, no, no. Just I've just got the will, just to, mm -hmm. just to. Uh, it's the strength. Just, yeah, just the strength. Or I, I want it more than anyone. You um, there's something else that you said. You said something about your. You had family members doubting you. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Just people in my um, family. I don't want to say any any names or anything. Or but that's a whole is. different motivation that gives you because if, if people, anyone can say like, oh, you're not going to do it. Yeah. Skin off a duck, you yeah. know, water off a duck's back. But if you've got people close to you saying, you're no good or you're not going to get yeah. there, etc., that's a whole different thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I have a lot of people messaging me, uh, ringing me, or even when I see people in person, they say, oh, such a body was putting you down or slagging you off or, do you know what I mean? So, but, but I don't know how anyone from my family can put me down and slag me off because I work, I literally work harder than anyone, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I do everything right, I eat right. Um, I have one Saturday meal a week, where I have like a Nando's, but like, I do everything right. I, I train my hardest, I break my back. Um, I train for injuries, um, so I don't know how, I think, a lot of it's just jealousy, mate. How does it make you feel? To be honest, that, that, that it gives me a bit more drive, do you know what I mean, just to mm. prove more wrong. It's a, it's a good thing to have. Well, yeah. look, your, your next fight, September 24th, yeah. Manchester yeah. Arena. Um, it's a bit of a homecoming for you, isn't it? Yeah. It's a, have you thought about it? Because I, I was watching a clip when you fought at Manchester Arena against Liam Williams, yeah. okay, and your intro into that fight, you got a lot of love. Yeah, I know. Well, that, that, like, I remember, like, I remember that like, fight. Like, you stay when I walked out. Obviously, I'd never walked out into an arena like that before, so I'd never experienced it. Um, so I remember when I walked out, and I remember looking around, and everyone was just going, wow. And I remember, I remember my legs going like, like, jelly. I was like, whoa. And then, obviously, I got into the ring, and I just like, from, from the first bell, I just, no, I just didn't feel like me, I don't know, I just didn't feel right. But obviously no, no excuses, do you know what I mean? Liam beat me fair and square. Um, but do you think that hindered you having, to, I mean, too much love from the crowd? Yeah, like, of course it did, yeah. If I remember right, they did around about 70 grand worth of tickets. Um, I remember, um, was it, it was Carl Frumpton, thing on it. That, that, mm. was, that was another show when Tyson Fury boxed. Right? Cause I, did, I did round about the same again. I remember yeah. Tyson Fury running up to Paddy, my mate Paddy Cortley, and grabbing the bag off him, and I'm like, missing around, <laughs> having, having a bit of banter with him. But yeah, like, I, I, I always do uh, like a lot of tickets at MEN, and uh, I think it, MEN's it's, uh, it's a good place for people to um, to get there. Um, it's like in the middle, in it, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's a good place, and like these good places where people can stay as well. And stay overnight, yeah. So how are we going to make sure that doesn't happen this time? Because you're going to get a lot of love. Not only have you done all those tickets that you've done, but yeah. you've also got these glorious belts. Yeah. Are you going to be able to take it in a bit 100%. more? 100%. I've got that. I've got the experience now. I've been there. I know what to expect. And I'm more than ready. Why is super middleweight the weight for you, Mark? Because I'm not starving myself anymore. Uh, making 11 stone and six. I was taking too much out of myself. I remember people say, look at the size of you for middleweight, you're massive. And then them same people had seen me again and then they'd be like, whoa, do you know what I mean? Because I, I, wasn't, I, wasn't, I was burning a lot of muscle to get down to 11 stone six. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was, um, and obviously 24 hours was not enough time for me to get it all back. Well, Joe Gallagher's got a very good history with super middleweights yeah. and super middleweight British champions yeah. in this gym as well. And you've got not just Joe, I've seen you today with Scott Quigg, yeah. crawlers knocking about as well. Yeah. This is a uh, this is quite the environment. This is it, mate. You you can't get much better than this. Uh, the, the people that are in here, I love training along Charlie Edwards. Like, I like, like when I'm when I'm shadow boxing, we're on the pads outside each other. He, he's he's a really good lad to be. I like, train alongside him with Paul Butler, Natasha Jonas, Hofi Burton. Very experienced. Him. He's been he's been in the game a long time. Uh, when I'm sparring, he's, he helps me out all the time, Hoffi. I think Hoffi, when he finishes boxing, would be a very good trainer. Um, yeah. So this is going to be like a, an eight-rounder, a kind of yeah. a, a welcome back, homecoming kind, it, kind yeah. of fight. Um, what, what, what kind of pressures does that bring? Is it kind of less? Would you prefer to have like a, a harder fight? Or like, how, how are you seeing this? Um, well, like, I'm easy me, like, anyone who knows me knows that, like, whatever, 
the, uh, my team put to me, I, I'll go ahead with. Uh, so yeah, that's just, I'm looking forward to it. You've been sparring Marcus Morrison, who's yep. got his own uh, British title shot yep. coming up. I've seen him looking at your belt yeah, yeah, um, yeah. All, all day today. How do yeah. you see him get, getting on against your, your old foe, Denzel Bentley? I think, that obviously, they're both good fighters. I think um, it's, it's going to be a very good fight. Uh, I think early rounds, I think it's going to be a bit of a chess match. And then I think the second half of the fight, it's going to warm up into a very good fighter. Yeah. Do you think he's got a bit of an, an advantage, the fact that he's been sparring you and you've been, you know, you've done rounds? Well, to be honest, I'd, um, like, I wouldn't say it was very similar, but me and Denzel, quite similar. We are, I, I box orthodox, I can switch self for, just like Denzel can. So obviously I sparred with Marcus now a few times and uh, just trying to replicate Denzel a bit, for obviously from when Den um, Denzel boxed me. So uh, yeah, that helped him out a bit. Yeah. How do you see the Joyce Parker fight playing out? I think that's going to be a very good fight. Um, I, I just feel like uh, Park has been in in a lot of fights, and I think he's got a lot of mileage on the clock now. I think uh, Joyce is quite a bit four or five years older than him, but I just mm -hmm. feel like he's not got the same mileage on the clock. I, just, I, I think I think Joyce wins that definitely. Mm -hmm. um, so what about yourself then? You, you get this eight rounder done. Mm -hmm. Let's get get another win. Yeah. What do you see as your plan? Because I can see Zach Parker. Yep. He's in the Queensbury stable. Yep. He looks like he's going to fight Demetrius yep. Andrade. He's a lot bigger than Demetrius Andrade. Yep. He, may, he may come away with the win. Could you mm -hmm. see a future fight with Zach Parker in your... 100% mate. Like, like I said before, many times uh, I'm not in this boxing to swerve anyone or duck anyone, uh, fight anyone. Um, as long as my team's happy with it. And uh, my, my manager, Kevin, that's what I've um, got him on, on board for. Uh, he's very experienced and uh, he'll, he'll put me in the right direction. Do you rate him, Zach Parker? Zach, a very good fighter, yeah. Very good fighter, big, strong. He's quite similar to me, can switch, hit, orthodox southpaw. I think it would make for a good fight. How do you think he gets on against Demetrius Andre? He's too big for Demetrius Andre. I think he um, could get a late stoppage. OK, and what about yourself? What can fans expect from Mark Heffron, his big homecoming, September 24th? An explosive um, performance. Uh, I just can't wait and uh, I'm looking forward to it and, um, and I'd like to say a massive thank you to everyone that's coming down to support me. All right, we'll yeah. see you then. Thank you. Cheers, Mark. Nice one.